This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace to you and peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And welcome to worship at the First Presbyterian Church of Warminster. And a special work, we're, welcome to those who worship with us through WRDV FM radio. And if you are watching today's service, you'll notice that I am wearing a t-shirt that has the letter V, which stands for victory. And that was the theme of our vacation Bible theater this past week. And today's service will feature the children who participated reading scripture and singing many of the songs they learned about how God promises to give us courage, faith, obedience, and unity. Today's liturgist is Shiloh, and she is joined by all the children who had fun celebrating our victory in Jesus. We had a wonderful time together at Vacation Bible Theater this past week. We used the Go Fish Guys music and victory curriculum, and each night of the week was focused on a different aspect of attaining victory. Through courage, through obedience, through faith, and through unity. Each night we also talked about victory through Jesus. 
Well, in the first night, our Old Testament story was about Joshua's courage. Joshua 1, 6-9 Be strong and courageous, for you shall lead this people to possess the land that I swore their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance to with all that is written in it for for then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall be successful i hereby command you be strong and courageous do not be frightened or dismayed for the lord your god is with you wherever you go next god instructs joshua to lead the people as they march around the city of jericho during Bible theater, we divided into two groups representing the Israelites and the city of Jericho. The Israelites marched around the city until it fell. We know we still need courage in our lives. Scary things happen to all of us. For some, it might be thunderstorms, clowns, snakes, or spiders. For others, there are scarier things happening to ourselves, our families, or our friends. We still need courage. Remembering God's words giving courage to Joshua, we can seek to hear God's voice in our lives, still saying, Be strong and courageous. Fear not, I am with you. I am for you. Who could be against you? God's love never quits.
Hear now the Old Testament song of victory found in Psalm 118. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love never quits. Let Israel say, God's love never quits. Let the house of Aaron say, God's love never quits. Let those who fear the Lord say, God's love never quits. God's now at my side, and I'm not afraid. God's my strong champion. God's my strength, he's also my song, and now he's my salvation. Hear the shouts, hear the victory songs. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You're my God and I thank you. God's love never quits. On our next night together, we heard the Old Testament story from Judges chapter 7 about the obedience of Gideon as God told him how to select the men that would go with him to conquer the army of Midianites. In today's world, we know that we still need to listen to our coaches, our teachers, and our parents. And we need to listen for the voice of God saying, follow me. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I gave you those commandments because I love you. God's love never quits.
That brings us to the Old Testament story about the faith of David, the little shepherd boy who would become king. When faced with the taunting Philistine giant, David accepted the challenge, knowing that God had already protected him while David was protecting his sheep from lions and bears. David had faith that God was on his side and defeated Goliath with just a slingshot and a rock. We still need faith today when we face storms in our lives and situations that seem too huge to manage. And we still need to listen for the voice of God saying, Believe me, trust me, I love you. And God's love never quits. And that brings us to the New Testament story about having faith in Jesus, the story of Jesus saving his disciples from a storm. Matthew 14, 22 to 33. Immediately he made his disciples get into a boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but this by this time the boat was battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear, but imme immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water, he said. Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the, w on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sit and started beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord.
I'm reading from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me any more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've heard people complain that the Bible has old stories in it. Well, yes, it does have old stories in the Old Testament. Some of that was written more than 2,000 years ago, most of it before Jesus was born. So yes, its stories are old. And maybe some of the stories are hard to relate to, because we've never picked up our trumpets and marched around a city until its walls fell down. And we've never been shepherd boys fighting off lions and bears to save our sheep. And while some of us think that we are the queens of our homes, we have never been the queen of Persia. So while I agree with you that the stories are old, I also want to remind you that many Christians believe that the old words in this book are still alive. So how can words in a book be alive? We describe the Bible as being alive when we are reading it and asking God to teach us what it means for us today. And that's what we were doing this week when we were listening for the voice of God to come through in the stories of Joshua and Gideon and David and Esther. We saw how God gave Joshua courage, and it helped us believe that God can give us courage today. We saw how Gideon obeyed God as he narrowed down his army to only 300 men and still was able to conquer the Midianites because by obeying God, God was able to prove that he could save his people without needing a huge army. And the faith of David to fight giants makes us feel strong that we can face difficulties in our lives, storms in our lives, even giant problems, Goliath problems, knowing that God is on our side and even our insignificant seeming little slingshots, when powered by God, can prevail. And look at the words of the scripture that I just read. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father to send Holy Spirit to live inside of you. This is how God is our coach. This is how coach God is with us to strengthen us and give us courage and victory. When we obey God, when we have faith in God, then God living inside of us gives us courage. God living inside of us. Listen to what Jesus says in verse 20. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. God lives in us. We are not alone. And when we join together as a community of faith, we find God living inside each of us, and we recognize God living inside each other. The community of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit includes us. We are part of the fellowship of God. You see, it's not just people uniting for a common cause. It's not just Bible theater kids and youth and leaders coming together to make Bible theater happen. It all happens because we all carry God within us, and God gives us the skills, the energy, and the joy to make it happen. 
just like the Old Testament stories, just like how God was with Joshua and caused Joshua to have victory over Jericho, just like how God was with Gideon and caused him to have victory over the Midianites, just like how God was with David when he fought off the lions and bears and again when he fought off the giant Goliath. Just like how God listened to the prayers of Esther and her people, because God was with them and saved them from the terrible plan of that king. You see, God within us still makes things happen. God still is writing new stories. They won't be published in the official Bible, but those stories of us having courage and being victorious are just as good as the ones in the Old Testament because God is just as good now as he was then. Because God loves us now just as, he, as much as he loved the people in the old stories of the Old Testament. That's what I believe. And kids, that's what I pray you will believe as you grow in your knowledge and understanding of God. This I pray. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of the Spirit, washed in His blood.
And finally, we have the Old Testament story of Queen Esther and the way she managed to unite her people in prayer. There are times that we feel alone. We need the community of others. We need to pray for others. And we need to listen for God reminding us, you're never alone. I'm always with you. Talk to me. Pray. Encourage one another through prayer. Use the prayer Jesus taught you. Let us now turn our hearts to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for making us part of your family and for giving us our own families. Help us to love each other as you love us. Keep us safe and healthy and help us to enjoy being with each other. Thank you for giving us all kinds of people to teach us, our parents and grandparents, babysitters and friends, Sunday school leaders and school teachers, ministers, and many more. Make them excited about what they teach and make us excited about learning more about you. Thank you for all the people who help us each and every day. Help our president and government leaders to make good decisions. And please keep watch over our firefighters, police officers, and all other people who work to keep us safe. We also pray for people who need help, for everyone who is sick or scared. Give your strength and courage to everyone who is suffering. And we pray for everyone who is sad, especially those who have lost loved ones. Lord, please bless each one of us. Help us to know you will always give us everything we need and help us to be happy with what we have. Watch over us and teach us to give you glory and to shine the light of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray together.
And now let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and to love and serve our neighbors. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen.